My name is Danielle Graber. I'm a clinical psychologist and an animal assisted therapist, and I'm also the director of 12 Point Psychology here in Ferntree Gully. I am making this video because as part of our welcome letters to clients, one of the things that we include is an what to expect from counseling and how to get the most out of your counseling sessions. And I thought it would be quite useful to do up a little bit of a video, one for the people who don't would prefer, the, prefer to watch the video rather than read the, the content, but also because it's a question that a lot of people have before they start seeing a therapist. What's this going to be like? What's this going to feel like? Are you going to make me lie down on a couch? All that kind of thing. And I thought, you know, a big, um, a really big and important goal for 12 Point Psychology is destigmatizing mental health, demystifying mental health, and I thought this video might go some way to doing that. So, the first part is the what to expect in counselling, and I suppose the first myth to bust is that counselling is only for people who are crazy, people who are climbing the walls people who have been really struggling for a very, very long time. Counseling and therapy can absolutely be great for all of those people, but counseling and therapy is often even better before you get to that point. And here in Australia, we definitely have a bit of a she'll be right attitude, which is great most of the time, except when it comes to looking after ourselves. And I have been guilty of that plenty of times. I once walked around with a dislocated bone in my foot for about three months because I kept going, eh, it'll be right. It'll like, it's been hurting for a while, but I'm sure it'll be fine. No. And if I had have gone to the physio much earlier, then it's quite possible I wouldn't have actually needed as much of an intervention as I did. And it can be very similar for our mental health. If we let the little things pile up and pile up and pile up and pile up, it often means that we're going to need a lot more time to unpack them and deal with them and, and to be able to move on from them. So the first thing in what to expect is that everybody who is coming for counselling is coming because they've got an issue, sometimes multiple issues, but there's an issue that they're feeling stuck with, that they don't know how to move past and they need a little bit of extra help and that's what we do. So the way we do that and one of the things to expect is that for most places if you're doing you know a regular one-on-one -on -one therapy appointment you'll find that the appointment is booked for an hour but the therapist will often only run the session for 50 minutes and that's because we do what's called sort of active therapy for 50 minutes and then we've got our 10 minutes of passive therapy and that's behind the scenes stuff that we don't you know we don't need you in the room to write the letter to your GP for example we don't need you in the room to finish writing our notes or to work on our formulation or to prep for the next session so that's you get your 50 minutes and and then while you're either you know fixing up payments at the front or on your way we're finishing up and, and sort of um, in the, the, the administrative tasks that go along with a therapy session. So that's why you'll find many places will run a 50 minute hour. The next thing to, to think about is, and it's, I think very important to know that therapy goes in stages. So your first session is not therapy. Your first session is what's called intake or assessment. And that can go, depending on, on the client, depending on the therapist and the way that they work, the assessment in the intake phase can take one, two, three, four sessions, sometimes more. And this is when your therapist is formulating your presentation, getting an idea of how am I going to help this person? What's going to be useful for them to take away from this? And again, it might be something, you know, seemingly straightforward, but we, we need to make sure we have enough information to come up with a feasible treatment plan that's actually going to help. Hopefully, 
your therapist explains this to you. So if I'm working with couples, for example, and it's quite a complex dynamic or a complex history between the two of them, I will let them know that, you know, when we finish this session, we haven't actually done an, a 50 minutes of therapy. We've done 50 minutes of intake and assessment. So don't go home and expect that everything's going to be different. This is this is really just the information gathering phase of the therapy. And for some for some couples, for some individuals, that can take quite a few sessions. But hopefully your your therapist is communicating that with you and letting you know, you know, yes, I have enough information now. This is what I've come up with. This is how I kind of see the issue that you have come to therapy with, and this is how I think it would be useful to approach it and then you guys can collaborate and work out yes this is where I want to go or no you've missed the mark I really want to focus on this part and you haven't mentioned that or whatever it might be but those first couple of sessions in particular are very much information gathering and starting to build the relationship because it's a therapeutic relationship that's going to be crucial for everything that comes next what comes next is the early treatment phase and this can be this 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 can last anywhere from a couple of sessions to a year or more um, and this is really getting a, a good grip on the presenting issue so if for example someone comes to us and they have had a car accident and now they're terrified of driving that's going to be a very very different information and early treatment phase than someone who maybe has come to us at, at, at 50 and they've been dealing with complex grief and bereavement for 30 years. That's going to take a lot more unpacking and we're probably going to go a bit slower so that we don't, well basically so that we don't overwhelm the system with too much too quickly. But traditionally, in, in, in most cases, early treatment is sort of you know, five, six sessions, something like that. We're dealing with the presenting issue as it stands and and trying to, to work on that one particular issue. Because, as I said, Aussies to she'll be right, mate it, oftentimes people come for one issue and that that can be a very important issue and it's very important that we deal with it, but there can often be there can be a lot of things that were ignored leading up to that one issue and if that's the case we might need more than just sort of the early treatment and and simple intervention this is when we might go into what's called the deepening phase it's the it's the medium to longer term work and it's not something that every client wants to explore it's not something that it's that's appropriate or, or necessary for every single client but this is when we really move from dealing with the presenting issue the you know the, the one that's kind of staring us in the face to looking at well why did that issue arise in the first place so like i said not always necessary and not always uh, not always appropriate or the right time and all of that kind of thing but if for example the presenting issue was something like a bad breakup and we've dealt with the grief and we've, we've kind of worked on that aspect and the client is feeling better and, and feeling able to, you know, to, to, to think about moving on to the next phase, whatever that might be. But as we've been doing that early stuff, as we've been working on that presenting issue, it's come out that there's been other breakups like this. This is a pattern that seems to repeat. Maybe I'm always dating the same type of person and it always ends like this or I never see this coming and it's and and breakups and, and things like that always come out of the blue and really blindside me. So sometimes as we work on that presenting issue, we, we can uncover patterns and, and longer lasting things that led to that presenting issue in the first place. If that's the case, and if the client and the therapist, well, the, the therapist has expertise in that area and the client is willing and waiting and wanting to work on that, then we move into kind of the longer stage, the medium to longer term type of therapeutic interventions. Finally, at some point, we get to the termination phase, which is a horrible way of describing it, but it's when ideally both parties, the client and the therapist, feel like, you know, we've, we've gotten a handle on this. It might be that 
we decide to move, we go from the early presenting issue and I've identified, yeah, there's some other stuff here that we could work on, but now's not the right time. We, maybe we'll put a pin in that and come back to it. So let's terminate the current course of treatment and we'll have a break. And maybe we'll have a break over the holidays or maybe we'll have a break for a year, whatever, but we're, we're terminating this current course of therapy with the view that at some point in the future, I might come back and work on this, this other thing. But what we want is that that termination phase is collaborative, just like the rest of therapy. We want that termination phase to be something that we've talked about and that we've worked through. One, so the therapist can get a sense of this has been helpful and, and this is where we're at. Two, so it's not just an abrupt uh, stop and everything's over and we don't get a chance to talk about like sort of relapse prevention or maintenance and that kind of thing. And three, just because it's a relationship. It's a, it's a therapeutic relationship, but it's still a relationship. And we know that all parties do better when there is a predictable ending to a relationship. So we really encourage you to talk to your therapist as you're going, um, check in and, and get an idea of, you know, what we're working on now. Is this something that, you know, I should be thinking about six, 10 sessions, or is this something that is going to require more sessions? Get an idea, set up your expectations for, for what's achievable in the time that you have. It might be that you're solely reliant on the 10 Medicare rebated sessions, and you've only got 10 sessions to work with, and you, you can't do more than that, then that is not the time to open up some big, long-standing, complex issue, because we can't put that all back together in 10 sessions. Not if you take in, you know, intake assessment, formulation, it's, it's, it's just, it's not a good idea. So having this conversation early with your therapist, getting an idea, yeah, this is something that, that is reasonable and, and appropriate to handle in six sessions. Doesn't mean that you have to stick to the six sessions either. Doesn't mean that other things don't come up. It doesn't mean that there's not crises that have to be dealt with. Uh, but just to get an idea of is is this, you know, what I have brought to you, is this sounding like short term, medium or long term work and have that conversation early on so that you can then have the conversation down the track of I feel like I've reached my goals. I feel like I've dealt with that presenting issue. I'm happy with where I'm at. I'd like to wrap up. What do you think that should look like? And the therapist can then guide you on. Uh, well, you know, we've, we've, we've done six sessions, we've worked on this, we've got the maintenance in place. Maybe I'll, I'll give you a couple of strategies to, to take home and, and keep practicing and then, you know, get back in touch down the track if, you, if you're needing any help versus someone that you've been working with for a long, long time, you know, maybe several years and they're feeling, yeah, I'm ready to finish up, but maybe we need to just start spacing the sessions out. Instead of coming in monthly, we come six weekly, then eight weekly so that we can have that sort of catch up and we've got that just in case we need to do a little bit of, of, of tweaking or maintenance before we finish up all together. So the, the short version is each stage of therapy can be very, very different. Um, our needs can be very, very different in each of those stages and what, what we and how we respond can be very, very different. But in general, there's that intake phase the, the early intervention on the presenting issue and then the, the medium or the longer term work that might need to go on and finally the termination phase. And these are all really important parts of therapy to talk about, uh, to navigate appropriately. I hope that's been helpful and I'll see you for the next one.